Is that vehicle coming this way? Please tell me it isn't. No. No. Okay, is it recording? Oh, sorry. Um, let me get your turn on. How are you guys doing? Chris Ignato here, and you are watching Nature Here and Now. Actually, you're watching an appetizer to a future upload, and I hope you enjoy this one. Check it out. So, this isn't my find. The brothers got this. And, uh, Harrison? Yep. Harrison got it? Mm hmm. Um, I never used their name, and there's a reason for that. So, I don't get it wrong. <laughs> um, but, uh, this is a northern black widow. You probably can't see her right now. She's not acting aggressive whatsoever. And I filmed widows before. I've got a cool video about them. It's a long video. And now, right now, she's sitting still, the wind's getting her, but she is not contemplating biting me. She's contemplating freedom, most likely. Absolutely. Um, but what a beautiful species. Now, however, notice the markings on the back. Much of the time, the adult ones will keep those markings, um, but other times, this abdomen will get really black, and you just have almost a complete hourglass on the bottom of the abdomen. But... Um, this species doesn't get quite as big as Latrodectus mectens, which is like the southern black widow, but its venom, surprisingly, is more potent. Now, I do want to point out that the amount of venom that this animal can carry is tiny. Figure, it only needs the venom to overpower its prey, and the venom is so potent that when you're feeding on something that's smaller than you, and you have venom large enough to take down a mammal like us, you don't need a lot of it. To take down a prey item. And venom is extremely precious to these animals. It takes a lot of energy, a lot more than people realize, to produce venom. So there's no reason for her to waste it when she knows it probably won't have the effect that she's looking for, which is to get away from us, to get away from the potential predator. But that's one of the reasons why Chris, Evan, and I are so confident in handling this animal, knowing how venomous it is, because, like I said, her venom is extremely precious to her. She's not going to waste it unless she absolutely has to. So if we don't give her a reason to, she probably won't. Yeah, can I say something real quick? Sure. So, believe it or not, um, I'm a little intimidated by spiders, right? And I know that you could, not that you should do what we're doing. Absolutely. Definitely don't handle any wildlife, especially a hot spider. Something that could land you in a hospital. Not to mention the fact that if you have anaphylaxis, that's life-threatening. That's just an allergic reaction to anything. Um, but I would be a little nervous to just pick her up the way Harrison did. But I'm like, oh, you know, I got to represent after seeing how he just boldly reached down. And what we're doing is we're putting our faith in science. Science and many biologists before us. This is not an uncalculated guess. Absolutely. You know, we are paying our attention to what's been learned and studied about these species. Not to mention all three of us, Chris especially, but for Evan and myself, we've been studying wildlife for 17 years. So we've learned, spent years studying black widows in captivity, seeing other species of widows down in North Carolina, for example, and we've handled hundreds upon hundreds of spiders. We can take into account things like the temperature and time of day and how that might affect their mood and their behavior. So in this specific instance, with this specific individual, we are confident taking this risk, and it is a risk. It is. But it's one that's calculated enough that we're comfortable sharing it with you. But please, do not replicate anything you see us doing. It just isn't worth it. That's the thing. Right, right. There's a lot of body language here that we're paying attention to with anything we handle or work with. I mean, we work with vespids and stinging insects all the time, but there are Everything out there puts out a ton of, you know, cues with their body language, let alone, you know, verbal language, mm -hmm. depending on what it is. But there's a lot of body language here with, with arachnids and herps that we read. And um, you get used to this stuff after a while, paying attention to it, you know, just like the letters in the alphabet. They all look weird at first, but after a while, they start forming words, and then those words become sentences. We are definitely listening to what the spider's saying. And it's saying, I don't want you holding me, but I'm okay as long as you keep cool. I'll keep cool. So, I say 
we turn her loose, but I you agree. have the honors. She is free. Look at that. No worse for wear. But that was awesome, man. First widow in the wild. First northern black widow, anyway. But that is awesome. This is probably the number one invertebrate, arachnid at least, that I wanted to see out here, so. I'm really excited about that. That's fantastic. I, I was wanting to, you stole the thunder. I was like, I'm gonna be like, look at that web and make it look all cool and everything. And I was expecting to find one over there. And you just rolled this log that I rolled two days ago. <laughs> and uh, here we go, Latidectus. Sweet. Awesome, dude. What do you think? Looks like a lot of fun, doesn't it? It's because it was. As I said, I intend to upload a video with that and many other clips like it in the future. It's going to be myself and the Wildlife Brothers on their first camping trip and their first trip to the Pine Barrens of New Jersey. It's going to be an awesome video. If you like this video, hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe because you'll be alerted when that video comes out and many more just like it. In the meantime, I'm Chris Ignato, signing out.